Hi, I'm Bill with Molly. Welcome to Chapter 3 in our ongoing series about understanding piston rings. Today we're going to talk about torsional twist. Now torsional twist is real simple. What it means is if we lay the ring down on the table like you see the ones here and we were able to measure or see it, each of these rings laid on the table would have a little bit of twist or spring to them. They're not perfectly flat. Now the reason we need torsional twist and desire it on piston rings is quite simple. Here's a little Chevy Cruze piston and you can see the rings on it. And you can't see by looking, but these rings have torsional twist. And what that does, it creates contact between the ring and the land and the piston that the ring fits in. And it prevents oil from migrating up behind the ring and working its way up into the combustion chamber, which would be a bad thing. So that's why we have torsional twist. That's what it is. Now what I want to talk to you about is number one, how we create it, and number two, how to recognize that your ring set has it. So how do we create it? Well for years it had been very simple. We would take a, what we call a rectangular ring, which was basically square and cross section, and we would create a bevel, cut a bevel on one inside edge, and as we beveled that ring on the inside edge, it created one side being stronger or stiffer than the other, and the ring would twist towards the weak side where we just cut the bevel. Now lately we've been making what we call Napier rings, which we're actually going to talk more about in the next video, but Napier rings, we cut a relief on the outside face of the ring. Principle is the same. When we cut that relief, one side of the ring is now stronger or stiffer than the other, and the ring then will spring to that side where we've cut the relief. Now what we're doing now that's really unusual, and many people have a hard time believing it, is we're into little rings that are so thin, a millimeter in thickness or less, that we have no room to cut a bevel or a relief on the ring. It's just too small to do that. So what we're able to do at Molly at the manufacturing level is we can take this ring and we have a die that's formed like a funnel and we have a press and we can come down and press this ring into a die. And you can imagine if the die is formed a little bit like a funnel and we press the ring down in, we're going to create torsional twist in the ring. Being that those rings are steel and they have a memory, once we take them out of the die, we've got torsional twist forever. So a very ingenious process that we developed at Molly. The best of my knowledge, we're the only one in the world doing that. So that's how we make the torsional twist rings. And then finally, as you'll see here in my little illustrations, I want to talk about how to recognize there's torsional twist and how the rings need to be installed on the pistons. You recognize it quite simply by looking on the side of the ring for a dimple or a dot or the Molly M, or the words top. And I think you can see all those in the little close-ups that I've got here. But anytime you see a dot, or a dimple, or an M, or a top, that goes to the top of the piston when you install the rings on your piston. Now if you get it wrong, you're going to have all sorts of performance issues, issues in the engine. So make sure you look for those dots. If you have any trouble, you get your rings out of the box, for instance, and now you don't know which ring goes where, you're confused about it, you can always go to our website, molly-aftermarket.com, and go need help, and put in what you've got. In this case here, you've got a 42156 CP set, and we'll get right back to you and explain to you which ring goes where and what direction it goes. It's that simple. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon for Chapter 4.